Should I tell the story of how it began? Yeah, okay. I was working at DC. My editor said, here, we have this title that only appeared for five issues. I said, what is it called? Suicide Squad. Who in their right mind belongs to anything that calls itself a Suicide Squad? And then the thought came to me. Those who don't have any other choice. In the DC Universe, that means supervillains. You took all these second-rate people and then made them these fully-fledged characters. By using some of the minor villains, I was free to kill them all. This is a testament to what John Ostrander gave me when he started writing The Suicide Squad, and I go, wow, this is really something different. It's black ops through crappy supervillains. This movie is a sequel to John Ostrander's comics more than it is anything else. This is suicide. Well, that's kind of our thing. James Gunn is the ultimate fanboy. He really responds to those characters that are not in the mainstream. And to me, that was the most interesting part of the whole movie, bringing each of their stories to the screen, even if they're only on screen for a few minutes. This movie had a very long prep period. The casting process took a long time, and then a very large cast needed to be costumed, propped. The first thing that James said to me when we were in the design phase, they should all look like they came out of their own movie. You have to treat each costume the same. We want the audience to think this is the group. James had a real vision for who each of these should be, and some characters he actually wrote for specific actors. For almost every character in the movie, the first person that we went to said yes. If I read that script cold, I would have been like, no way am I doing this. But because it's James, 100%. It's like angels are splooching all low for us. James said to me, I want to do the comic. I want red and black. Her jacket is partly leather and partly wax denim, because I find it holds up better. Custom dyed. And then that dress, I call it a couture evening gown on the edge of a quinceanera dress. <laughs> wow, was that? The ruffle design, it's sort of asymmetrical and doesn't really make sense, so that later when pieces get ripped off, it looks good. I always think of Holly as being a kid on a playground. Like, if there aren't any other kids on the playground, she'll run around for like five minutes, and then she's just gonna sit there and kick the dirt. But you throw other people into the mix, and suddenly it's just mayhem. This is the javelin. I'm waiting for God to tell me. Jesus Christ. Yeah, or him. Everyone's really dipped in to their character, really baked in. They just had this world weariness that Bloodsport needed. You're joining your goddamn suicide squad. We'll see. He's probably the character I changed the most. In the comics, Bloodsport has a other dimensional cachet of weapons that he can reach in and pull out different guns. And that's when I came upon this costume with weapons that transform, and it was really complicated. The pieces do come out, physically come out. That has to be translated into a prop. We'd have meetings with eight or 10 of us. Judiana attacked it from the style of the final costume, and I did it from the style of the final prop and worked our way backwards into what would fit. No one likes to show off. Unless what they're showing off is dope as fuck. Peacemaker. He's very socially awkward. Something as simple as the uniform hits on the head that this guy has validation problems. If you're doing covert ops, you wear something like Idris's character. You try not to be seen. This is a guy who wears a large fucking chrome helmet. Everything is red, white, blue, and yellow. This man genuinely thinks he's a hero and wants his Peacemaker logo on everything. The hardest thing in this movie, really, to design was that helmet, because in the comic, it is so silly. And then when James said he wanted it chrome with reflections, but somehow it works. It's not a toilet seat, it's a beacon of freedom! James is pretty incredible at knowing exactly what he wants, but then he'd also know when the moment was to, like, leave room to create. James knew you'll just roll the cameras and let them go. Flula is obviously an incredible improvisational comedian. There is so much bonding that occurs on the Osprey between all of the team members. There was chemical bonding between uh, Holly and I. Our pheromones were exchanged. What? And between TDK and I, we cut this out of the film. I punched him directly in the testicles. There is a character named Javelin. Yeah, he throws a javelin. That's his whole thing. I actually did create TDK for the movie. TDK is just a guy whose arms and legs come off. That's his only power. Then his arms start to fly and cross you, Jared. Look at Jared. That's his arms flying. In my mind, TDK, he got his arms into a bank, trying to get into cash drawers and whatnot, and he couldn't get his arms out. Not too bright, fantastic costume. 
What's your name, man? Oh, uh, uh, my name is Blackguard. Black who? Blackguard. The original character has a really long purple ponytail, so I'm just kind of relieved that I don't have to do that. I'm about to get shot in the face, which would make uh, Twitter very happy. Oh my God, Pete Davidson was so lovely. There are elements of the molded pieces that do reflect the comic. James wanted it more real for that one character. Pete was such a good sport because the first day we hadn't really perfected it and it was so heavy. It's really cool until you're like thrown in water or it's hot, uh, it's like 40 pounds of leather. But like when you do one of these and you're in it for so little and you're just like so lucky to be in it, you can't be like, no leather, you know? They go leather and you're like, yes! But that costume, it is very cool to me and I hope I get that jacket. <laughs> Yo, is this a dog? If you look at pictures of the weasel, he is mighty looking. He's a were weasel. If you've ever had a pothead roommate who owned a ferret, you're getting close to what we have here with the weasel. My brother Sean does some great work. People fall in love with him, as disgusting as he is. Is this thing a dog? I'm gonna go with Afghan hound. Just when is an Afghan hound have bloody thumbs? Boomerang was always a little bit of a controversial character. Some of the stuff in the comics, it was just an opportunity to bring some of those elements back in that lit something up in me, you know? Always saying the wrong thing and being a bit of a disaster personally, and there's a chaos that that creates. Michael Rooker is a price I pay to make movies in Hollywood. I've got to put him in all of my movies. Arr! Arr! God, that was awesome. Thank you. He was talking? Putting him in the long white wig was especially fun. I was just wanting to work with Gunn again. The crazy, nutty experience, and I'm not sure what causes me to want to be abused in such a way, but let's do it again. Why not? <laughs> I'm sure she's not dead. She's too powerful for that. Mangal, that's her name, because she's a gal. I am applied with like prosthetics and glue from head to toe. Full orange scaled skin, all of this hair that goes down to my bum, that's all wrapped into a ball cap, prosthetics put on, then the spray paint, sealant glue. She definitely stands out. These are the dregs of the supervillain world, or they're people who are not good at, you know, what they do. We've got to take these lame superheroes and give them soul. David is a personal friend of mine, and I just wanted to write a superhero role for him because he is a haunted guy. He's a very joyful guy with a wonderful family, but he looks haunted. <laughs> <laughs> and he's scary. When I was starting to read the script, I was really meaningful. It's a, an interdimensional virus. They stare at him. I have a skin condition that leaves me without pigment on large splotches across my body. And as a kid and a teenager, I felt really insecure about my polka dots. That was one of the nicknames that I had uh, as a kid. I was like, James, does he know that I was really embarrassed about having polka dots all over my skin? And if you didn't even know. When he put the helmet with the goggles on, because all of that is custom created, that is nothing bought. In the gauntlets, it has a lever, like almost like a Venetian blind. He can do it himself, so the lever's open. I've never seen anyone, he almost started to cry. I'm a guy who has been reading and collecting comic books for the majority of my life, but this is the first time that I've put on a superhero costume. It was a pretty emotional, incredible moment. The first question that I asked was, do I really kill people or I just use the rats to scare people or something? James told me that I wouldn't know how to fight, how to use weapons. I understood that I would not be at all like most of the villains. I would be more laid back. No, I don't like bugs, but I don't want him to be dead. She brings so much heart and soul to this. I'm gonna get you out of your life. I'm going to get you out of here alone. That storyline actually is quite tender, quite sweet. Even though, honestly, I just can't. I don't like rats, personally. Love them or hate them, these are your brothers and sisters for the next few days. There is a classic image of, like, maybe a little heavier, darker mindset than this. I told James that I don't really want to feel, like, tied down to what I did in the first film. A lot of soldiers watching Hilton. That'll leave the palace vulnerable. You're a good man. 
Colonel Flag. What I didn't see coming was the emotional depth. He created a larger range for the character. Should have known. Waller's always got a backup. To me, the villain really is Amanda Waller, more than anyone else. I sort of like playing the badass, unapologetically. I love the whole idea of the anti-hero, seeing this woman with the lavender suit, the very conservative afro, and the little pearl earrings. There is a sense that she is harmless. Ah! Amanda Waller is sort of the chess player. I'm protecting this country. You don't know half of what I would do. The most brazen thing about the film is the legitimacy with which we treat these characters. At the end of the day, movie is about characters and it's about relationships. And if those things don't work, the movies don't work. Everybody has something unique to themselves and being able to bring this out is what allows the movie to be what it is.